Hi there and welcome to October 2024 solar generation stats video. Um, yeah, the weather's continued to be terrible really this month as you'll see in a moment and it has uh, for the first sort of week or so of November as well but I suppose that's coming into winter and autumn it's always going to get a bit worse but it seems like it's getting a, a lot worse than previous years at the moment. So what else has been happening this month? Well, not too much but I am managing to uh, trick the system a little bit by getting my car charged in the morning uh, until sort of 11 a.m. is the kind of cutoff point for Octopus Intelligent, which is really good because it's really helping um, top up the battery. Because obviously, when you charge the car at 7p, the whole house gets 7p. So I've managed to then charge the car and charge the battery up to 100% again. So by the time 11 11 a.m. comes, the battery's back up to 100%, which then means that my 8 kilowatt hour battery uh, sort of lasts or should last all the way again until 11.30 p.m. Uh, when cheap rate starts again and I can top it up. So that's been pretty useful. But before we get into the stats, let's just remind ourselves of my solar panel system. Uh, so 14 Jinko 390 watt panels, uh, totaling 5.4 kilowatts, 10 on the south and four on the east, and a solar edge four kilowatt inverter so that's the solar side. On the battery side, we've got the three kilowatt AC inverter and the eight kilowatt Gen 1 Give Energy battery. And then of course, I've got a few extra bits and bobs such as the My Energy Eddy heating the hot water, the Harvey and the Hub, and the Hypervolt EV charger. Right, so the month of October then. Yeah, 360 kilowatt hours for the month. I did say last month, I was hoping for 400, but clearly that has not happened. Uh, so, yeah, a couple of good days on there, but really some terrible days as well. Um, I think the worst day of the month was the 1st of October, 1.8 kilowatt hours, with the best for me probably being 27, which is really good for an October day, uh, 11th of October. 3rd of October was pretty good as well with 26. And then the 24th was good with 22. 27th of October was 20 kilowatt hours, but there were lots and lots of days kind of in and around the kind of five to seven kilowatt hours, um, which coming into November probably wouldn't be too bad, but I expected a little bit more out of October, to be honest. So we've got a four there, three and a half, four, two, four, and that one at the beginning. So it wasn't a great month at all, to be honest. So the average for the month was 11.6 kilowatt hours per day. Let's have a look at how it compared to last year's. So here we are looking at last year's. Uh, this year is in green, uh, last year's in blue and 2022 in red. So if you can see down the bottom here, October was a really good month actually in 2022, 476. I'd be really happy with that this year. Um, but you can see last year was 369 and this year was 360. So out of the three years that I've had of October's, this one was the worst, um, which sort of also matches the worst year for September as well. Although August was slightly up on 2023 um, and so was July actually. But uh, yeah, so that doesn't sort of bode too well going into November. Um, last year, as you can see there for next month, I had a bad 180 uh, in 2022 and then 244 in 2023. So I'm not expecting anything as good as last year in November. Certainly the first few days in November have been really poor, like, you know, one and one or two sort of kilowatt hours per day um, for the first few days. So if that carries on, um, we're not, we're going to be looking at <laughs> about a hundred um, kilowatt hours if we're lucky. Right, so if we just have a look at the panels themselves on the roof of the month, out of the 360 kilowatt hours, uh, the 10 on the south on the bottom and the four on the east on the right. So the ones on the east around the 20 kilowatt hours each for the month, and then the ones on the south all around the 28 really uh, each for the month, except for that one at the top there. Uh, for some reason that got 29, just a little bit more. So looking at the My Energy Eddy for heating the hot water, again, ran it overnight um, on cheap rate. 
an octopus intelligent. And then what I've tried to do is I've tried to stop using it um, during the day so that we just export as much as possible. If you see some smaller spikes, uh, then a little bit did get in uh, during the day although I could kind of program it to stop it in the morning as I found out that Home Assistant's quite good at being able to sort of automate the turning on and off um, of the My Energy Eddy, if you wanted to know that. So a few small sort of uh, spikes there, although a lot of these are just thick, wide spikes uh, for the overnight kind of use. So for the month, um, we put 160 uh, kilowatt hours of electricity overnight, mainly overnight, I say, into the eddy, although some of it was a bit during the daytime, which would have come from solar. What I did notice at the end of the month there is that we are missing some data, and I have no idea why. As far as I know, the sort of hub was talking to my energy servers, but we seem to have lost data from the 28th, 29th, 30th, and 31st of October. So the numbers would have been higher than that, but I'm just going to sort of quote the numbers that are uh, listed on the My Energy website. So we're now in the Hypervolt dashboard for the EV charger. And as you can see, October was a super big month for charging the cars more than anything else, mainly because my job, uh, my new job now makes me kind of uh, travel in a couple of days of the week, whereas before I was completely remote. So that meant in October, we actually used 531 kilowatt hours overnight on Octopus Intelligent to go into the cars. Although I have also found, as other people have mentioned, that I've managed to put power into the car on cheap rate in the mornings. Uh, if you set it to be ready by sort of 11 a.m. and I'm at home that day, I can f I find that you know I can charge it from nine till 11 in the morning, and then the whole house gets the cheap rate as well, so I can top up the battery a little bit. Um, and also in the evening sometimes as well, I can start it off a bit earlier if uh, the car is low enough and doesn't have enough charge in it to complete, it will start early. Not always though, and I believe that people who have um, compatible uh, EV chargers with Intelligent, which Hypervolt version 2 will be hopefully sometime soon, um, you can actually, then the Octopus doesn't know how much charge is in your car and you can probably get it going anytime. Um, whereas I'm sort of using the BMW setup and it kind of obviously Octopus then knows how much charge my car has actually got because it's talking directly to the car. So for the two EVs for the month, we used 531.5 kilowatt hours out of the Hypervolt and the total mileage for both cars for the month was a lot more this month, but it's 2,597 miles with a total cost if we times the 531.5 by 7 pence on Octopus Intelligent, it comes out with 37 pounds and 20 pence. That means we were getting an average cost per mile of 1.4 pence, and we were getting on average 4.9 miles per kilowatt hour, which is pretty good for October. So we're in the Octopus dashboard now. Uh, I showed you this uh, new dashboard kind of last month. Uh, I still quite like it. Uh, October, so October, yes, 1135 kilowatt hours, obviously a lot more. And I think most of that comes from the actual EV charging um, being more, really. I don't think we've used that much more um, overnight doing things. Um, there was one free electric day in October, so that would have added a little bit to that where we tried to get as much uh, into the house in one hour as we could, like a little competition um, without sort of blowing the main fuse. But yeah, so 11.35 uh, in October, if we look at that throughout the month, then it's fairly uh, average, really, a bit up and downy, um, but uh, 60 kilowatt hours on that day, on the 12th of October. I wonder if that was a free day. Right, so now looking at the actual export, I've got it on pounds here on the money. So for the year so far, we've done £424. Um, in October, we just did £33.73 pence of export. Uh, obviously, a downward slope going into winter, as you can see, because last month we did 50 in September, and the month before we were sort of hitting 75 in August. Um, and the most for the year was £80. 
for that month. So you can see it's on its uh, downward trajectory and it kind of 224.864 kilowatt hours exported in October. Uh, what did we do last month? Yeah, 342 in September. So that's quite a lot lower. One thing I did notice on here is that my export is all kind of the same level between January and April. That's when my kind of export wasn't being recorded by the smart meter, although the meter outside on the wall was recording it. So I think they've just kind of averaged that. So I don't know if those numbers are exactly correct for the first four months of the year. Um, but the other kind of six months showing are correct. Uh, what does that look like during the month? Well, yeah, looks like we exported hardly nothing on the 1st of October. I told you that, but that day was really bad, the 1st of October. And some of these other days where there's just been really negligible little bits of export uh, dotted about. But really, those these really do mirror um, solar edge generation days where there were a couple of good generation days. So we sort of exported as much as we could. Um, and when they were really bad, we didn't export anything. OK, so on to some numbers then for October. So the grid import is slightly different this month because I've started kind of uh, charging the car and getting a bit of use for the house on 7p during the daytime and during the evening. So it's a little bit more complicated to work out. But luckily, you can export the data from Octopus. So I used that and sort of changed my uh, query on the data. So for the month, 11.04 kilowatt hours at 7p equals 77 pounds and 28 pence. And on the expensive rate, which has gone up a little bit in October for the uh, last quarter, 26.72 pence now on, uh, for me anyway, on Intelligent uh, Octopus, 23.8 kilowatt hours, that equals six pounds and 36 pence. Export was obviously down this month, 224.86 kilowatt hours at 15 pence equals 33 pounds and 73 pence, um, way down you know, by a third from September last month when it when we exported 342 kilowatt hours. So for the gas, we haven't really turned it on yet, really. We're sort of turning it on now in November, sort of in the evenings when we get home. Um, so for October, we used 90 kilowatt hours. Uh, the gas has gone up as well from October. This is on Octopus uh, flexible rate, 6.16 pence, uh, five pounds and 60 pence in total for just the gas itself. We'll come on to standing charges in a moment. And I had a look at the Octopus gas tracker for the east. Um, it's gone up a lot, actually. I haven't moved on to it yet still. Um, it seems very close to the kind of uh, six pence. The average for the month was 5.57 pence per kilowatt hours for the gas tracker on Octopus. Although the last few days, um, first week of November, it's sitting around the 5.7 pence per kilowatt hour for me. Um, so there doesn't seem to be that much saving to be had, but I suppose if you've got the gas on a lot, then uh, there is more savings to be had. Standing charges then gas. Obviously, these have gone up a little bit as well due to the October price hikes. So the gas for me now is 29.38 pence a day times 31 days, £9.11 pence for the month. Electric is now 48.79 pence a day for me on Octopus Intelligent. Uh, times 31 days is 15 pounds and 12 pence for the month. So if we put all the numbers together then, so the gas we spent five pounds 60 plus the standing charge 911 equals 14 pounds and 71 pence. Now for the electric, uh, we used 83 pounds and 64 pence. Uh, of that, I must say that 37 pounds and 20 pence went in the EV. Uh, eight pounds and 90 pence went in the eddy although i'm missing a little few days of data on that one um, and four pounds and 27 was a free hour which i'll come on to so 83.64 we imported from the grid plus the 15 pound and 12 pence from the standing charge uh, but minus the export so we exported 33 pounds and 73 pence and then we had one free uh, saving hour um, for that, I was uh, given back by Octopus four pounds and twenty-seven pence for that one hour. So in total, for the electric, we spent sixty pounds and seventy-six pence uh, for the month. So altogether, seventy-five pounds and forty-seven pence on both the gas and the electric for October. Um, I think that's really just higher because we spent a little bit more money 
uh, on the EV really and obviously the export was a lot lower than previous months uh, that's why that figure was a little bit more so that's it for the month thanks very much for watching if you got this far that is don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're not a subscriber don't forget to leave your comments below about your solar generation for October as well and give it a like if you like the video thanks very much for watching and I'll see you soon